Blue Top Gearbox, Kryptonite Pitman Arm, Croil Penetrant Oil, all gonna come and play today. First thing we need to do is we gotta go ahead and flush the power steering system. We're gonna show you guys how to do that right away. So Blue Top's instructions are quite vague, so we're gonna go ahead and show you guys exactly how to do it. Um, it's pretty simple to do, but just simply because it's kind of vague instructions, we're gonna go ahead and show you exactly what we need to do. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take this tire off, take the wheel well liner off so we can get access to that side of the steering shaft and everything like that, and then we'll go up underneath the truck. All right, now we got our plastic, most desired, hated things that I hate in the world off of the wheel well liner. Go ahead, take your wheel off, it's a 22 millimeter. Now go ahead and underneath, you're gonna take off your skid plate bolts. There's a few of them, you're gonna take off both these skid plates. They are a 15 millimeter. Gotta go ahead and take the hot side pipe out. Um, just go ahead and take this clamp off. You're gonna push it back. And then we're gonna drop the truck down actually right now because we forgot to do that. And then once we drop the truck down, we'll show you exactly what we're gonna do up there. All right, so next you're gonna go ahead, take the top part off of the hot side pipe. This is an 11 millimeter. And so was the bottom one here, just to let you know. And we're just gonna pull it out probably from underneath here. All right, so next step down here, we're gonna go ahead and pull these two lines on top of the gearbox. See if I can get a better, there we go, right there. You're gonna pull those two and you're just gonna let them drain them out. You're gonna drain it out into a bucket that we got down there. Now those two lines are an 18 millimeter. I would highly suggest you getting an 18 millimeter flare for a situation like this. This will make our life a lot easier. And of course you guys know today's video is sponsored by Croil. Without Croil, this project would be a lot harder. We're gonna go ahead and soak the three bolts that we need to take out in our Croil. We're gonna soak both sides of it and we're just, I mean, we're gonna drown it. We're gonna make sure we drown it so that way we don't ruin our sockets or ruin our impact wrench or even ruin, well, I guess the steering gearbox doesn't really matter because we're replacing it, but you know what? You wanna make sure you're using some type of penetrant oil and I tell you right now, you're gonna be wanting to use Incroil because it is the best you can buy on the market without a question. So like I said, we are just going to absolutely soak these son of a guns in Croil. We're gonna do the front side and we're also gonna get up in here and get the back side of these soaking. Again, like I've said time and time again, Croil is something I've been using, my father's been using, my grandfather's been using. It's just an awesome product, you can't go wrong with it. I appreciate them for hopping on the channel, for sponsoring us for a while here to come. You guys need to get yourself some and you can get it on Amazon, the link will be in the description below. So just a quick heads up, and able to get that back one out, we had to go underneath the brake lines here with the flare wrench to be able to get at that back one. So just keep that noted. So as you see here, now we've got our power steering draining. All you had to do was pull those top two off. For some reason, Blue Top doesn't really, the instructions were just really weird on how they noted it. So just keep, just, just letting you guys know, pull those top two lines and you'll get your power steering drained all the way out. Now it's very important that you guys drain your entire power steering out because you don't want any old oil in there. You don't want your old power steering fluid in there. And that's simply because you, it's just not good for your new steering gearbox. A lot, there is a lot of yeah, you, this, that, this, that, that goes into why some of the new ones leak. And a lot of it is, hey, sorry our dogs are just kind of going all crazy right now. But anyways, a lot of it is simply just because that people think you're using the old oil, the old fluid, as to why some of the new ones that you put in leak. Nobody's got stat statistics on that, nobody's got facts on it, but hey, don't use your old fluid, just buy new fluid. We picked up four quarts, and we'll explain that once we get the old steering gearbox out. All right, so right down here, this is the set screw for your steering shaft. We're gonna go ahead and get that soaking in Croil also. We kind of forgot about it. Oh, there we go. We kind of forgot about it, so we're gonna soak that really nice and good. And again, when it comes to Croil, you don't have to use any heat at all. You're just gonna simply spray it on, let the chemicals do its work. It's gonna do absolutely everything you need it to, to do. And then that is gonna be an 11 millimeter. You're gonna go ahead and loose that up loosen that up, get that taken off, so that way we can go ahead and take our bolts off and then our pitman arm and get this thing dropped out. I can't express how much of the ample amount of croil I am using on a project like this. You absolutely wanna soak this stuff in this. So like I said, you're gonna wanna use it and you're gonna wanna make sure you do this so you don't break any of your sockets or your tools. All right, so next step, right up here, we're gonna go ahead and take this off. This was the nut that the pitman arm bolts to your center link. This is a 21 millimeter. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our, our gearbox bolts off. There's three of them, and these are a 21 millimeter. A 
All right, so what we did is we loosened all of these up right now, and then we have this one just kind of just a quarter of the way out because the gearbox is starting to move on us. So we're, right now we're gonna go ahead and take the get the Pitman arm out and disconnected so that way we can safely take everything else out and we don't damage anything else underneath for steering. And of course, we're gonna go ahead and use our good old trusty pickle fork with a hammer to be able to get that popped out of there. And once we get it popped out, we'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, so that popped out really, really easily, you guys. You can see it up in there. We've got it all, all loosey-goosey now. So now we're gonna feel a lot more comfortable taking these other bolts out that we need to take out for the rest of the steering gearbox. Now that you got, and we got that set screw taken off of the steering shaft, we should be able to just slide everything out. All right, so now we gotta get the hardware off for the, to use on the new Pitman arm, just this nut and washer. It's gonna be a 34 millimeter, but we gotta clean this off first so that the 34 millimeter fits on there a lot better. There's a lot of rust and stuff on here. And then it, it, it is a nice snug fit, so we'll give it a little tap. The big Ugga Duggas. Now stay tuned for next week's video as we talk about how to pull this Pitman arm off of the steering gearbox. We're not gonna worry about it right now because we wanna get this job done and over with. It's something that you need to do and able to turn your new, your old steering gearbox in for your core charge, with, which is $150. So you definitely wanna make sure you do that. So we're gonna go ahead and show you exactly what tool we're gonna be using. We're gonna show you exactly how to use it and how to properly use that tool in next week's video. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead, get the new Pitman arm on the new steering gearbox and look at getting this installed. The first thing though, before we do anything, I do wanna mention one thing. And this is your set screw bolt that you took off of the steering gear, steering shaft into your steering gearbox um, it has Loctite on it now what you're gonna see here in a real quick second is we're gonna go ahead and use a wire wheel and able to take your Loctite off I want to express this to you guys that you need to take your old Loctite off before you put new Loctite on and before you even reuse a bolt we are also going to clean up our old bolts that we took out of the old steering gearbox just so that the install on the new gearbox goes a little bit easier. And again, if you don't have a bench wire wheel, you can do this with like an angle a grinder type wire wheel or even, you know, just a wire brush. It's very yeah. important you guys do that. And now you can see, hopefully you can see the difference. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna focus for you guys because I don't have a big fancy camera. The difference of not having that Loctite on there, it's, it's really nice and it's really, really, really important you guys to make sure you're clean anytime you're reusing nuts and bolts anything like that make sure you're re-cleaning them after you take them out before you put them in always keep your workspace clean always mise en place mise en place <laughs> all right so as we get the the new pitman arm on um, keep in mind the torque spec for this is going to be 184 foot pounds you're gonna have your washer well your lock washer and then your nut you're gonna have your german torque spec rating of good and tight and then you're gonna go ahead and hit it with 184 foot pounds on the torque wrench. So now that we got the Pitman arm on the new gearbox, we're gonna go ahead, and get it back in place here. And simply, we're gonna go ahead and put, get the Pitman arm in, get the steering shaft back in place, and get our three bolts on. It's, it's really not that hard. We'd actually have been having a great success with this so far. So keeping our fingers crossed that our success continues on the actual install of the new gearbox. All right, so definitely use two people for this because you're gonna need it. What we did, is we got the Pitman arm put into place here, underneath here. And then we put our bolts in for the blue top steering got box. We got our bolts in loose right now. We got the Pitman arm in place. We don't have anything tightening down. Just to let you know, there is going to be a gap here. This is a tapered stud. So there's not gonna be a lot of threads down on the bottom here, but you're gonna go ahead and just get that crank down with your Ugga Duggas, get it torqued down properly. And there will be a little, a little gap because this little sleeve here, this is going to make up and cover that gap. Now, when it comes to in here with your steering shaft, you can see here we got it attached. You simply can just move that steering shaft back. It was very simple to just take the steering shaft, move it backwards, put in the steering gearbox, and then move the steering shaft back over there where we need to place our set screw nut, you could say. Um, and then once we get that in place, we're then going to tighten our bolts down and then tighten our pitman arm down. So the first thing we're gonna do, the steering shaft set screw slash bolt, and then we're gonna tighten down the gearbox and then we're gonna do the pitman arm. I'll reiterate it. The reason I'm doing it that way is just because it makes sense in my head. You don't have to do it that way, but personally, how we took it apart versus how we're putting it together, that's how we're doing it. Again, that right there, that nut, that set screw bolt right there,
there, that was an 11 millimeter. Now we're gonna go ahead, get these tightened down. This is a 21 millimeter. One more thing I'm gonna add is when we do take a lot of our bolts and our nuts and bolts off here in Wisconsin, you're taking a coating off. Then now that nut or bolt is susceptible to major, major rust issues through the salt. So one thing I always do is this is another candle product. This is not part of the sponsorship. This is a product that they have that is just an absolute, you could say God send to the north and it's called Cano Weatherproof. And this right here, I simply just spray it on anything that I've currently taken off. And it's a clear coating and it helps weatherproof anything. It protects all your parts from corrosion and stuff like that. Again, it is clear, so it's not gonna put a nice black shine finish on it like some of them do, but this, this product lasts and it lasts for a very long time. All right, so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna get the pitman arm torqued down and put onto the center link. But the first thing I wanna talk about, this is gonna be a 7 8 nylon lock nut. And I can, I always preach all the time. It's one thing that I love about kryptonite is they upgrade your nuts typically always to a nylon lock nut, which is outstanding for anything that you do with any motors or vi vibrations. Now again, this is a 7 8 Again, I don't remember if I said it or not, but this is gonna be 46 foot pounds. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. Again, to tighten those flare nuts back down onto your steering gearbox, go ahead and get yourself a flare nut wrench. This is an 18 millimeter. It makes quick, quick work of the job that needs to be done and you're gonna be thanking me later when you get a set of these or even just get an 18 millimeter so you can do this. I do apologize though because I just can't for the life of me get a good angle on those flare nuts. So I'll show you guys exactly where they are when we get um, tightened down. But unfortunately I just can't get a good camera angle on the actual flare nuts themselves as we install them. Oh, there we go. Right. Oh my God, I can see everything. All right, so now what we did, we've got, we dropped the truck down a little bit. We got the lines back into the box and then we also put our hot side pipe back on. Now, Blue Top tells you to leave the return line off of the steering gearbox itself and able to bleed the system. There's a much easier way to do that and that's what we're gonna do right now. It's gonna require really not much effort at all and it's not gonna require you to have to crank the truck over for no more than 20 seconds without starting the truck and um, all that kind of mess that has to be. This is gonna be a lot quicker and a lot easier and it's just plainly a lot simpler, so. All right, so right here is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this hose off and that clamp off. That, that's what I want. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna leave that one off and we're gonna attach a separate line to it and we're gonna take this line and this line is gonna go into a bucket. So this is how the setup is gonna be. And then we're gonna go ahead, someone has to be filling up the reservoir as somebody is in the truck and you're slowly moving the wheel back and forth to bleed that system out. It's a great way to do it. It's a simple way to do it. It's a lot easier than messing with that gearbox down below. All right, so I wanna explain something real quick here for you guys. What I'm doing is I'm slowly turning the wheel and at the same time I'm pumping the brake real nice and gently. So you're gently pumping the brake, you're slowly turning the wheel and you wanna keep an eye on or have someone keep an eye on your hose because you wanna see clear fluid come out of that hose and then you know you fully successfully flush your system and you have your, all your new fluids in your new gearbox, your hydro booster, and your power steering pump. You wanna have all that fresh fluid in there. That's why it calls for four quarts of this. So you wanna go through this whole process of the, you got the truck on, slowly turning the steering wheel back and forth from full lock while pulse, pulsing the brake until you get that clear liquid. So now we've got our clear fluid going through our lines. It's beautiful, all fresh new power steering fluid. We hooked it back up here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, get the truck up a little bit more, get the tire put back on, get the lug nuts torqued back down and uh, take it for a test drive, see how it is. And we will do a review on this. We'll do a review on the gearbox. We'll do a review also on the sway bar end links coming up in here, in here maybe a few weeks from now. Um, we got a lot of other stuff going on. So stay tuned for that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or any comments, make sure you comment down below. Please hit that like button and that subscribe button. I appreciate all the support. Make sure you hit that bell button so you get those notifications for when the videos are uploaded. So that way you get to see these right away and it helps the channel out a lot when you guys watch them right away and you watch them all the way through. I appreciate every last one of you. Have yourselves a great night and we'll see you in the next video.